check this. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Cloud Thinking. Today I'm coming back at you with another educational video where I show you some of the top command prompt commands that I believe everyone should know how to use. It can really help you troubleshoot any issues with your device's network connectivity or you can fix basic file system errors uh, using one of these commands. Now there's a ton of more commands that you should probably know but I think that for uh, your average person who doesn't know a lot about a computer or doesn't really care to know a lot about a computer then this can be very beneficial um, and save you a lot of time and a lot of money just troubleshooting some of your own problems with these so let's go ahead and get started so to open the command prompt or PowerShell the first thing that you're going to want to do is go down and right click on the Windows icon as you can see I'm using Windows 10 so I have Windows PowerShell and I'm gonna run it in the admin role now I will go ahead and throw up an image on the screen that shows you if you right click down there if you're using Windows 7 then you're gonna see something slightly different it's called the command prompt you can go ahead and run that and these commands will work the same way now the first command that we're going to learn about is probably the most popular command. I know as an IT professional, I use this command sometimes hundreds of times a day. Um, now this command is to test basic uh, communication from your device to another device. So how you do this command is in the PowerShell or the command prompt, you'll simply type ping. And for these purposes, we're just going to use a generic address. So we'll go to google.com you hit enter and of course it's going to bring back the the IP now if you're using IPv6 then you're going to see it in this format for those of you who are used to using this command you're probably used to seeing a standard normal IP address but the future is here and IPv6 is in so you know if you want to be able to see a standard IP address then you simply go back through instead of typing just ping you'll type ping dash four all right right before the DNS name for that site and then of course it returns the standard IP address format let's do another test we will leave the dash four and we will go to Yahoo hit enter and of course it brings back the IP address now another cool command when using ping is if you have the IP address such as we'll use 98.138.252.38 so and I'm simply hitting the up arrow to bring back the last command that I used let's get rid of the DNS name here because we're going to ping the IP address let's get rid of the dash 4 and let's add in dash a which is going to resolve that IP address to the host name all right so I'll type in 98 138 oops dot 252 dot 38 and hit enter and as you can see it comes back with the true DNS name for Yahoo now if this is within a network it, it won't have as much information in it it'll just give you whatever the name of that network device is but since we are going to something like Yahoo and Google it's gonna give us a lot more information and just to let you know I will put all of the commands down in the description box that I've discussed today so the next command let's move to the IP config command so this command is very useful if you want to see your entire network configuration that's both for wireless and wired connections you can also release and renew the IP address if you're having some network issues this comes in handy if you leave your PC on and you oftentimes you know we have to go and pull the power cord on our routers or our modems 
If you do that, then this does come in handy. If you don't want to have to reboot your machine, then you can run the release command and then the renew command and it'll pull a new IP address for you. So the first one we'll do is IP config and the command is slash ALL for all. All right, you hit that and of course it brings you a lot of information. As you can see, you have all the information for your network connection. Now I'm gonna block out some of this information for my own privacy, but you will see all of the information specific to your actual connection, such as your IP address, you'll have your physical addresses, also known as a MAC address. And you know, it'll let you know if DHCP is enabled or if it's getting a static IP. Just basic information for troubleshooting network connections. Now, if you want to release this, you can type in ipconfig slash, you guessed it, release. And it will drop your connection. I'm not connected through hardline, so it did not notice any ethernet media or local area connection. And my wireless connection released everything. So if you need to get a new IP address, then you can type in ipconfig slash renew. And then it goes through and pulls new IP information for your connection. Now the last ipconfig command that I want to show you is the ipconfig slash flush DNS command. And pretty much what this command does is it goes through and as the name says flushes and resets the contents in your DNS client resolver cache. Now, this is good for DNS troubleshooting. Uh, you know, it goes through discards, any negative cache entries, as well as any other entries that have been added dynamically. So you hit enter. And as you can see, it successfully flushed the DNS resolver cache. It does not take long at all. All right, next command is the SFC slash scan now command. And pretty much what this command does is SFC stands for system file checker. And this is, it's a convenient little command that, you know, helps you go through and check the integrity of file systems. Uh, if there is a corrupt or missing file, then this uh, command will go through and find them and replace them. And depending on how many files you have on your computer, it kind of determines how long it's gonna take. So we hit enter, and I will speed through this so that you don't have to wait the entire time. So it says beginning system scan. Here in a minute, it will show you a progress bar, which is convenient. And there's the progress bar. Okay, so the scan successfully completed and it did not find any integrity issues. Yours may find some, but again, it does go ahead and fix them. All right, one last thing that I do want to show you is that with any command that you enter into the command prompt or the PowerShell, you can always type a question mark after the slash. And what it'll do is it will tell you information about what that scan sorry what that command does as well as any different options that you have for that command and again this works for any command that you have so you can see all the options for what you can do with that command And this one's gonna have a few. Let's see, there's all, release, release six, which you can choose a specific adapter. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, go ahead and hit me that thumbs up. Uh, if you know anybody that this may help, go ahead and share it with them. And as always, if you wanna stay up to date with my current videos, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notifications. I do post one to two videos a week and believe that you will like them. All right.
Talk to you later.